If there were rankings for escape rooms, Cube would definitely be the pinnacle of terrifying escape experiences, but compared to the thrill of breaking through barriers, escaping from a room with no exit is the true classic. Take, for example, the 2024 escape room movie The Abandon. This time, the director didn't just incorporate gravity and anti-gravity elements into the room, but also added time travel and spatial traps. So today, Let's take a few minutes to explore how one might escape from a room with no exits. The story begins with a mission in Iraq. A U.S. Marine squad is carrying out a clearance operation. With the help of the Air Force, the enemy hiding in the bunkers is quickly neutralized. However, just as the squad was cleaning up the battlefield, an unidentified force suddenly appeared on the battlefield, and the enemy army was ambushed halfway up the mountain, forming a titanic force against the squad. Miles, the squad's communications officer, immediately reports the attack. But during the rescue of the wounded, Miles is hit by a bullet. The captain could only retreat to an earthen hut with the surviving squad. At that moment, two signal flares suddenly appear in the sky. The captain thinks reinforcements have arrived and quickly leads the survivors in a counterattack. But the flares explode in midair, and a blinding light illuminates the sky. When Miles opens his eyes again, he finds himself in a strange room. The room is surrounded by walls on all sides, with no exit in sight. At first, Miles thinks he has been captured by the enemy, but when he looks back, he is shocked to find all his gear and weapons beside him. If he had been captured, the enemy would have confiscated his equipment. Looking around at the strange surroundings, Miles is puzzled. Although he didn't know what was happening, the military-born man calmed down quickly. He opens the first aid kit and does a basic bandage on his wound. Next, Miles pulls out his communication device to contact headquarters, but upon activating the equipment, he discovers there's no signal in the room. It's then that Miles notices an upside-down message on the wall. Looking around, he sees a few more lines of similar messages nearby. The messages seem to convey the same thing. Give up. At first, Miles assumes these were carved by others who were imprisoned in the room before him. So he doesn't pay much attention, he lowers his head to check his gear. But when he looks up again, he notices that the message on the wall has gained a few more words. The bizarre sight unsettles Miles. He recalls clearly that there were only two words on the wall earlier. So how did these new words appear? He looks up again, only to see that the message has grown even longer. Just as Miles was puzzled, he suddenly felt some heat in his body. Miles assumes the small room is just poorly ventilated. So he removes his clothing to cool down. But the heat doesn't dissipate. As Miles wonders about this, a drop of sweat falls to the floor. He watches as the sweat instantly evaporates, and that's when he realizes something is wrong. The relentless heat makes Miles feel faint, and he collapses to the ground. However, just as he thinks he's about to be roasted alive, the strange heat vanishes as mysteriously as it appeared. Parched, Miles grabs his canteen to drink some water, but as soon as he unscrews the cap, a strange noise echoes through the room. Before Miles can react, he feels his body start to float. When he opens his eyes again, he finds the floor has changed. The wall with the message is now the ground. Looking at the message on the ground, he finally understands how it was carved. But before he can process this, he feels something dripping from above. He looks up and sees his canteen and some of his gear stuck to the ceiling, watching the water droplets fall. Miles becomes completely unsettled. At that moment, the satellite phone on the ceiling rings. Miles tries to reach for the phone, but it's out of his grasp. He took off his shoe, intending to throw it at the phone to knock it down. But the shoe, like everything else, was sucked up to the ceiling. As Miles was figuring out what to do next, a strange hissing sound suddenly came from the corner. Turning around, he saw a layer of white frost spreading rapidly across the floor. As the frost spread, the temperature in the room began to plummet. Miles hurriedly put his clothes back on and huddled in a corner. But just as he was bracing himself for the cold, the room began to spin again. During the tumble, the satellite phone rang once more, and Miles seized the opportunity to grab it. The spinning stopped shortly after, and when Miles checked the phone, he found numerous missed calls. He redialed one of the numbers, only to discover that the caller was a woman. Hello? Miles wanted to ask for help, but the woman on the other end seemed even more panicked than he was. Through their conversation, Miles learned that the woman's name was Damsey, a physicist. Like Miles, she was also trapped in a similar room. Miles initially thought Damsey was a military expert who had been captured on the battlefield. 
but she clarified that she wasn't a soldier, she was simply driving when she saw a flash of white light. And then she found herself in the room, hearing Damsey's story. Miles recalled the white light he saw on the battlefield. He, too, had seen the light before being transported to the room. Miles suspected they had been kidnapped by terrorists, but Damsey suggested otherwise she believed they had been abducted by aliens. Her reasoning was that the gravity system in the room was far too bizarre for human technology. On top of that, there were obviously no lights in the room, but there was light all around. Hearing Damsey's words, Miles reacted to the question. He reached out and confirmed that the light was indeed emanating from the center of the room. This level of technology was beyond human capability. The strange events led Miles to believe that they might indeed have been abducted by aliens. But what could the aliens want with them? Before Miles could figure it out, another strange sound filled the room. The necklace around his neck suddenly got pulled upward, and as he tried to remove it, his wristwatch was tugged in the opposite direction. Miles could feel a powerful force pulling him in all directions up, down, left, right, forward, and backward. Just as he thought he was going to be torn apart, the force vanished. Miles thought back to the first two anomalies. Every time something strange happened in the room, it meant the room was about to start tumbling. He warned Damsey to be cautious, but as Miles braced himself, he noticed that instead of spinning, the walls of the room began closing in. Miles pressed against the walls, trying to stop the shrinking, but it was futile. Fortunately, the walls stopped moving after a short while. Miles surveyed the room and realized it was now half its original size. What had once been a floor of nine tiles was now reduced to four. Miles looked back to find some more messages on the walls. Some words he couldn't read either. Just then, the phone rang again. Miles thought it was Damsey, but when he answered, it was a man on the other end. Hey, do you, do you speak English? Before Miles could ask anything, the man hung up. Miles was about to call back when Damsey called. He hurriedly told Damsey what the man had just said. Upon hearing that there were equations on the wall, Damsey began searching her own room, but her room only had a few messages and strange symbols, with no numbers in sight. Just then, Miles spotted a message in the corner with the year 2007 written on it. He thought it might be a clue, but after examining it, he couldn't find anything useful. Damsey had a similar message in her room. She told Miles it might have been left by someone who had been trapped there in 2007. Miles found this strange wasn't it 1991 now? But Damsey told him it was currently 2020. Hearing this, Miles was stunned. He hastily looked at his watch, which did indeed read 1991. He had only been in the room for about an hour. So how had 30 years passed outside? The two of them realized they were from different time periods. Just then, the room began to shrink again, reducing the floor from four tiles to three. The same was happening in Damsey's room. Miles noticed that the time between each shrinking was decreasing, meaning the smaller the room got, the faster it would continue to shrink. As the room became more cramped, Damsey suddenly had a thought, could they be trapped in the same room, but in different time periods? Hearing this, Miles grabbed a knife and carved an X into the wall. Sure enough, the same mark appeared in Damsey's room. Damsey tried drawing a handprint over the X. This is you? Yeah, yeah, Miles, do you see that? And it also appeared in Miles' room. Though the orientation was reversed, Damsey speculated that there were likely many people trapped in the room, each from a different time or dimension, without satellite phones. They couldn't communicate with each other. The messages on the walls were left by people in different time periods. With this realization, a bold hypothesis formed in Damsey's mind. Could the key to escaping this room be tied to both space and time? However, there were too many messages on the walls for Damsey to find any clear connections. Just then, Miles noticed a notebook beside him with some Latin words representing page numbers. He recalled the symbols on the walls when flipped. They corresponded to Latin numerals. Miles quickly jotted down the symbols from the walls and translated them. After a few minutes of effort, Miles discovered that the symbols translated into a calculus equation. He remembered the previous phone call the equation the man mentioned must be this one. The same equation appeared on the floor of Damsey's room. With her physics background, Damsey quickly realized that the equation was related to dimensional space. But when she tried to solve it, she found the equation was missing a variable. Without this variable, the formula couldn't be completed. Miles thought there might be more clues on the walls and looked around for anything else. But suddenly, the equation on the floor was erased. Miles, so, I'm, I'm not doing... Miles, hey, stop. what the hell? What are, Miles, no, wait, what are you... Miles initially thought Damsey had wiped it out, but she denied doing so. Before they could react, 
The equation was completely blacked out. Staring at the darkened floor, Danzi remembered the room's synchronization feature. She speculated that the equation had been synchronized to other rooms. Someone else must have done the smearing. But why would the other person smear the equation? Was it possible that the equation was flawed and the person was trying to warn them? But Miles quickly dismissed this idea. If the person who erased the equation had found an issue, they could have left a message instead of erasing it entirely. This suggested that the person who erased the equation wasn't another prisoner but rather someone controlling the room. They were afraid the equation would be solved, leading to an escape. Realizing this, Miles hurriedly copied the equation onto his arm. But before he could finish, the room's gravity suddenly shifted. Miles felt like his whole body was sucked up by a hoover and he couldn't move. The intense gravity even pulled the bullet out of his body. <laughs> Before he could recover from the pain, the room began to rotate and shrink again. When Miles struggled to his feet, he saw that only two floor tiles remained. If they couldn't solve the equation before the room fully contracted, they would all be crushed. But what was the missing variable? Just then, Danzi thought of spatial coordinates. Could the variable be related to the room's shrinking? She tried inputting the room's changes into the equation, and sure enough, she made some progress. But after one calculation, Danzi realized that there was a key value missing from the variables. As she pondered what this value could be, the room began shrinking again. Now, only one floor tile remained, and Miles had to curl up tightly in the cramped space. Just when Miles thought he was dead for sure, Danzi thought of the missing values. The value was the time intervals between the room's contractions, but she hadn't been keeping track of the time. Luckily, Miles had recorded each interval on his watch. He quickly relayed the timing to Danzi. Danzi plugged the variable into the equation and finally solved it. The result was 1. But what did that represent? Danzi thought back to the room's origin point. Each time the room shrank, it contracted both horizontally and vertically. This meant the room's origin was constant. She looked up at the wall directly in front of her. This brick is exactly where Miles marked it earlier. Danzi told Miles to push the marked brick. At that moment, the room began shrinking again, though uncertain if Danzi's theory was correct. There was no time to hesitate. Miles pushed the tile with all his might, but nothing seemed to happen. Just as Miles was about to lose hope, something miraculous occurred. When he opened his eyes, he found himself in a different space. With Danzi directly across from him, he looked around and saw many others, likely all people who had been trapped in the room. But if they had solved the equation, why hadn't they escaped yet? As Miles pondered this, he felt a sudden pull. When he opened his eyes again, he was back on the battlefield. Was everything that just happened a dream? While Miles was still confused, a strange aircraft flew by. It was a model he had never seen before. Looking up, he noticed his team members staring in one direction. He looked along the gazes of the crowd, only to see a horrifying scene. And that concludes the story of The Abandoned, the latest suspense thriller of 2024. Overall the quality of the film is pretty good. Well that's all for today's share. We'll see you next time.